Thank you. Good evening. I'm Peter Engelbrecht. I'm the CEO and founder of Firmafon. We're a Danish uh, phone company that targets businesses. We're basically a phone company that's not too awful, um, which is uh, it's not easy if you look at the other companies. But uh, we've managed. We have about uh, 2,500 uh, businesses rely on our services in Denmark. Uh, we're only in the Danish market uh, right now. Um, is that a high number or not? I don't know. We have probably more customers in Denmark than uh, Centesk or Sh Shopify, for instance. Um, Morten, thank you for the invitation to speak. Uh, I was a bit confounded when you asked me, as you might recall, because, uh, as I said, we don't really have any growth hacks. Uh, we're too small, basically. Uh, so that's one key point uh, that I discovered early on, is do not waste your time on uh, Optimizely or uh, you know, other such tools when you have uh, a few hundred visitors uh, a month. Uh, we're a little larger now, and um, uh, we, do some, uh, we do some fun things that I want to share tonight. Um, I looked at uh, the term growth hacking, and I thought it's uh, probably important to uh, emphasize the hacking element. So, so this one tonight is going to be for nerds. Uh, <coughs> by the way, if you're phone coming, all this stuff about engagement and users coming back and so on, it's a little weird to me, because engagement for us is making a phone call, and people just seem to keep doing that. So we don't have any trouble with that. <laughs> uh, but there you go. We have other challenges. So um, I want to talk about tools tonight. And, um, and there's a whole class of tools um, that a lot of us use that are special purpose tools like Moz or um, Optimizely. And those are great. And uh, I recommend those. But you uh, should think about the fact that it's hard to differentiate with those tools because everybody else uses them as well. So I think uh, to do good growth hacks, it's uh, great if you have a general purpose capability in terms of how you analyze data. And um, so the toolbox I want to talk about tonight is in this area of the general purpose uh, capability. So this is about how you crunch numbers in, in a startup. Does anybody want to leave or no? <laughs> OK, how many in here use uh, Excel? All right, this is going to be a good talk. <laughs> this is Excel. It's, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. It's comfortable. It's uh, not super fast, but it'll get you there. So it's a pretty good product. I used to be an Excel user. I've been there. Uh, this is growth. It's a really hard track. Um, that little Hyundai Excel thing is not going to get you off that track. So um, you're going to be challenged. But I have some, uh, I have some help. <laughs> <laughs> I think, guys, it's time for some four-wheel drive here. Uh, you want to up-level into Google Spreadsheet. We did this early on. We did it just, hey, it's free, and we don't like Microsoft. Let's use Google. Boy, there was a lot of positive surprises awaiting us. So what do you gain by switching from Excel as a growth hacker into Google Spreadsheet? First of all, uh, Google Spreadsheet is a real cloud product. And uh, I'm aware of the fact that Excel has cloud capabilities as well. But you know, Excel spreadsheets just have this tendency to end up in emails and basically not have one truth. With a Google Spreadsheet, it's always it's a URL. It's always in the cloud. There's always one version of the numbers. This is extremely powerful. So that's number one. Number two is you have really, really good scripting in Google Spreadsheet. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how you use this, or how we use this in our daily work. And it's created a ton of value for us. Um, I, I have never programmed Visual Basic for applications. I don't know if anybody has, but I think it's crap uh, based on my limited knowledge. And uh, Google Apps Script, on the other hand, is JavaScript. It has a great execution engine. That runs in the cloud as well. So you can have it do stuff for you uh, every night at midnight, or you know, your computer doesn't have to run, uh, basically. So that's number two. Number three, the Google spreadsheets are connected. And because they all live in the cloud, they're really connected. So if you change stuff in one spreadsheet, it can be reflected in other spreadsheets. And they don't have to be on the same hard drive. Uh, so so um, again, this is going to be very practical. There is a, there's something called import range in Google Spreadsheet, which, which is just an amazing thing that reads the ranges from one spreadsheet to another. There's something called URL fetch app uh, in the JavaScript engine that will let you fetch stuff from other sources. 
uh, like REST uh, APIs. And um, there are many dashboards that can read from this live data that your know, Google spreadsheet will be. Uh, so that's really useful. And then finally, it's a little commercial here, there's, a, there's an open source uh, Ruby gem called To Google Spreadsheet, developed by Themaform, that allow you to push stuff into your Google Spreadsheets from your backend. So that's awesome. So it's very good at getting data in there. It's very good at sharing its data with the world. And uh, then its analysis capabilities are actually, I think, uh, many steps ahead of Excel. There are two commands called filter and query that will, uh, that's like VLOOKUP on speed. So those are great. Highly recommended. How do we use it at FEMAFORM? Uh, well, just, just one example is, um, by the way, FEMAFORM's growth hacks, if we ever have one, is about lifetime value on analyzing churn, lifetime value in great, great detail. It's pretty easy to get one lifetime value number. If you really want to start segmenting your customers and, and uh, getting to the meat of it, uh, it it's, you have to do very detailed work. And the way we used to do that, we did a lot of it, and it's a very good way is, we had our backend database push data uh, about uh, revenues and users <coughs> into one spreadsheet. We have another spreadsheet that you know our, our finance team just enters like sales and marketing expenses into. Uh, that could be fed by APIs, but we just enter it manually. And then we had a you know always updated uh, lifetime value analysis that we can consult whenever we want it, which was all the time. So that was great. That has that has uh, served us well. Uh, another example that we have used a lot is, uh, is this lifetime value thing. To us, it's about churn. It's about reducing churn. That's a big level we have as a phone company. And uh, one of the ways we reduce churn is by trying to be very good at uh, making our customers happy. Uh, and one of the ways we measure that is we measure by what they say to other people, not what they say to us. Uh, and so Trustpilot is a good indicator of that. So we discovered Trustpilot is it was just a number we looked at and uh, we thought it's pretty good. It's a little better now, it's a little worse, but we couldn't systematically track it as a real KPI. And so we built a Google Apps script uh, that went out onto Trustpilot's uh, site and it got our scores every night and it built a database of Trustpilot scores. I think you might be able to buy this from Trustpilot, but we, we screen scraped it. And, um, <laughs> I asked Peter, who's the CEO of Trustpilot, <laughs> if, he, uh, if he minded if I, I published this. And he said, can you wait till we have our next uh, financing round? <laughs> 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 and he did get the round, and it was very good. And, and uh, we published this. This is on our wall in our, in our office, and we track it uh, all the time, because there's a dashboard system called uh, Portfolio that reads from the, from the Google Docs uh, spreadsheet. So that's great. We use that a lot. And this is just one example. We have we have a number of important indicators uh, that we track that way. Good, good, good. That got us really far. That got us probably to 1,000 customers. <laughs> but uh, if you want to get all the way to the, to the summit of that mountain, we discovered that uh, Google Docs only, it'll only get you so far. Because once you start putting you know, half a million values into it, it starts acting up. Uh, so that's basically the amount of data um, it, it, uh, it gets problematic. And there are some, some other challenges. So we were kind of stuck, and uh, there was a number of analysis we, we just couldn't do that we know, knew we uh, needed. And uh, then we discovered a tool called R. There, there you go, that's R. What is R? R is it's a programming language, so it, you know? This does get nerdy. If, you're, if you've never looked at a programming language, this, this could be problematic. But if you can just program a little bit, I'm no expert. I've programmed this R thing. It's not that hard. Um, so instead of filling out cells, you, you actually uh, create, can you read this? Create little text files with commands. And uh, it's a pretty neat environment. Let's talk about why it's better than Google Spreadsheet, or any spreadsheet. So first of all, the analysis you can do with R are just incredible. I mean, you can, if you wanted to do a neural network that studied your growth, you can do it very easily. Any uh, state-of-the-art um, statistical analysis is available in R in pre-written packages. I think, for example, Google, for a lot of the stuff they do, they uh, rely on R. It's, it's uh, very up-to-date. It's, it's very state-of-the-art statistically. Uh, there's more than 5,000 packages of um, uh, solutions for various uh, statistical um, 
um, problems and so on. So that was good. Uh, really what I think is the best thing about it is you have your, uni your logic unified. So what I mean by that, what I mean is if you do your analysis in a spreadsheet, it's spread out in many formulas. So each formula has a little bit of your logic. Maybe your script has a little bit of your logic. And, and those uh, formulas, if they get long enough, and ours did, they're impossible to troubleshoot if you get the wrong result. So um, in R, you just have one text file with all your logic, and uh, it's there, you can troubleshoot easily. And which gets you to reproducibility. If you run the same analysis, you get the same result every time. So that's, uh, that's another really important thing. And then finally, you can version control your, um, uh, your, your code. So uh, uh, you can keep track of the changes you made, and you can share it very easily with others and collaborate on it with other growth hackers. And it will, it will take data from, from anything I've seen and uh, output it to anything. And so here's the kind of analysis we're able to do with R that we didn't do before. Uh, and I, I think the source code, uh, it's in a link in the last slide. And I think they'll be, they'll be published, right? So you can click it. Uh, but what this does is this does a cohort analysis. So it takes like this for every month in 2014, it, it uh, shows how much each customer or how much all the customers that came in that month, um, how much revenue we got from, from that customer or from that cohort of customers, sorry. And as you can see, so the, the longest one is the oldest one. So this was January. They started low the first month. Uh, you're just getting on board. You're, you're just buying uh, tw 10 days of phone usage. And then you start adding some users. And uh, you see how wonderful female phone is. You buy some more, you buy some more, you buy some more. And um, now these cohorts this year, they, they look pretty similar. But if I just looked at how much when the customers come in, how big is this customer? I'd get these dots. They wouldn't tell me much. This tells me a lot about how much the customer is worth uh, in total. And this tells me that our cohorts are very healthy this year. So if I just looked at my revenue in, in August, I would see them all mixed up. And one could really be falling, but would be hidden by others that were growing. Um, so these added up, all the cohorts added up, gives us our total uh, growth. And um, because we focus so much on trend, what happens now is that you can see the development here, our install base keeps growing because they buy more than the customers that leave us. And um, so if I, had, if I did not close a single new customer in October, my revenue would still be higher in November than it was in October. So that's a negative churn. And that's a, kind of the growth hack on churn. If you can get it to a negative churn, uh, you really have a great engine. So uh, there's a lot to be done with cohort analysis. I, in the time given here, we can't cover it in detail. I highly, if, you, if you're not doing it already, uh, I highly recommend you dive into it. It gave us uh, an enormous amount of, um, of practical things we could change. Very good. Uh, I, I want to save you, here's some more practical advice. I want to save you some time because R is an enormous ecosystem. So here's the recipe. Go download R Studio. This is the tool you want to use. I've tried many of them. R Studio is what you want to use, and then use these particular packages. These are the growth hacking packages, in my opinion. I know it's very practical, but you'll thank me later. Uh, we have a production data, and then we mirror it into another uh, database instance, and our R uh, setup reads directly from that. That works super well for us. Great. So I want to summarize, um, basically in a coordinate system. Uh, the tools can be easy and they can be complex. And uh, I think maybe you got the gist that as we went through the three solutions I described here, it, it gets increasingly complex. None of them are impossible, but it gets increasingly complex. But what you gain for that complexity is you gain uh, a lot of capability. So uh, you go from basic to, to very powerful. And uh, based on my point is, if you, if you want to, you know, if, if you do simple financial analysis, it's great down here. I think for growth hacks, this is the stuff you want. There you go.